Hello, welcome to a special Coding Train episode. This episode is the first in a series of some number of videos that I don't know right now because I haven't made them yet, all about unit testing and continuous integration. And this really fits into my playlists and topics about open source development. So, you know, if you've never used Git or GitHub before watching this, before you're here, I might suggest going and watching my Git Hub, introduction to GitHub videos. If you've never even never used Node, you might even watch my like what is Node video. I'll link to both of those in the description. But other than that, this is for the total beginner who has never done any unit testing or continuous integration. And you know why I know that this video is for that person? I am that person. <laughs> Before last week, I barely, I mean, I've done a little bit of unit testing and I've dabbled, I've read, I've seen other people do it. Mostly I'm afraid of it. I think like, oh, this is gonna make it so I can never get anything done anymore. And people say, no, it's gonna make it so you can get everything done anymore. So I'm here to investigate that. And I should have mentioned this at the outright, this video uh, series is sponsored by CircleCI, which is a company that provides as a service continuous integration. Now, what that is, I will get to eventually. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to watch me continue to talk to get to that. But let's, so let's start. So I'm gonna come over to the whiteboard for really no reason other than to write the word here, unit testing. So continuous integration can be used for a variety of different things, but probably one of the more common things it's used for from what I understand <laughs> is TDD or test driven development. So let's think about this. I was saying another video series you could watch, which is very useful about unit testing and with CircleCI, uh, is from MPJ, Fun Fun Function. I will link to those videos in the description as well. And MPJ says that you can think of software, a software project, a P5 sketch, you can think of my snakes and ladders game from last week, as a big project divided into lots of little parts. There's the player part, there's the snake part, the ladder part, all of these are units. And what if I change something about the player to fix a bug, but don't realize it's also going to break whatever the la ladder functionality or the snake functionality is? In this case, if I have tests that run for each unit to say, this little test code runs and says, the ladder is working. This little test code runs and says, the snake is working. This little test code runs and says, the player is working. If I change just one, I can run all the tests and know that my code is fine. And the benefit of this is not just for your own personal sanity, but for collaboration and open source projects, because this can be automated. You can have whenever somebody submits a pull request to your project that tests are run. And it doesn't just give you confidence about merging, it gives the contributor a good feeling and confidence that the tests have run. And if they haven't run, then you can help them figure out how to fix it so that they do run. So all of this is good. Good, 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 good. And I'm gonna learn how to do it and try to adopt it more in my work. Now, uh, where have I encountered this before? The place where I have encountered this before is with the open source project P5.js. So P5.js, you might be aware of, is a library. Uh, is, a, is, a, is a JavaScript library that I use for a lot of my tutorials learning about the basics of coding and graphics and creative coding and data stuff and all this sort of stuff. So all of the source code for P5.js as a project is here. You might have encountered P5.js as just this file. And here I have my snakes and ladders game in which um, you can see like that's the P5.js library. And if I click on it, it's like, oh my God, this is all the P5.js code. But if you're working on developing the library, <laughs> scroll, 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 scroll. If you're working on developing the library, it's likely that you're not, you don't want to work with that file. So it's divided into lots of little units. And those units you can find in the GitHub repository in this folder called source. So in source, you can see there's all the code for all the color stuff. Core stuff is like the core drawing functionality, data, events. And so if, um, and then there's a build process. So once you finish doing your little change or whatever, then the process, the build process runs and finishes off with this you know, smooshed together P5.js file that is all of the bits, all of the units together in one file so it can be used more easily. So during that build process, tests run. So this is the source fold, these are the source folders. For example, I'm gonna go here, one of, one of the aspects that I worked on a while ago is uh, the random functionality. So there's a, there's a file called random.js. And if I click on that, we can kind of look down and see like, oh, Look, here's like, ooh, look, this is the actual random number generator code that's inside the P5.js library. This is what actually runs, and it's kind of really interesting. I should do a video about this linear congruential generator stuff. But, um, 
and how random seeding works, but that's another topic. So we can see this is the code. Now, where was that? We have to remember that was in uh, P5JS source math random. So now let's take a look and say, hmm, there is also, <laughs> if I, there is also test. There's a folder called test, folder called source, folder called test. I'm going to go into test and look at this. Oh, and then I'm going to go into unit. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden, look at this. Don't these directories look very familiar to you? For every single unit, piece of a puzzle of the P5JS library, there is a corresponding test. And so let's go right into math and let's go right into random. Now, this is not the source code for the library, remember. You could, you could cut back and forth between the video and it look the same, but if I go here, you're going to see, ah, this is a test. Now, you might be wondering, like, woo, what does sweet mean? And what is, uh, what is, um, I'm going to look like uh, test and assert and type of. What is all this code? So this is where you most likely want to involve yourself with, that's a weird way to say it, but might want to select and use a testing framework or a testing library. If I write about this, P5 uses a testing framework called Mocha, which is a very popular one. I'm going to, as I get a little further into this tutorial, use something called Jest, and I'll talk about the differences or what that is, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But we can start to, even without knowing anything about it, we can see some code here, because look at this. All right, this is how we test the function random. The first thing we do is we set the random seed, and then we pick five random numbers. Then we set the random seed again, and pick five more random numbers. What should that do? What makes it correct? If, when you set a random seed, if you get the same sequence of random numbers. So first of all though, before we even do that, like does random even produce a number? So we should check to make sure all 10 of those things are numbers. And that's what this assert type of blah 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 as a number is checking. Then we should check to make sure, well random's supposed to give us a number between zero and one. So we should check to make sure all those numbers are between that range. And then we should test to make sure random seed worked. Are they all, is it the same sequence of random numbers? Way could also test if when you pass in the argument 5, if you get a number between 0 and 5. When you pass in the arguments 1 and 10, do you, get the same, do you get a random number between 1 and 10? So this is what testing is. That way, if I'm contributing to P5 and I change something somewhere else, how, what if I like, don't realize that something I'm doing somewhere else in the library actually breaks the way random works? This will tell me that. So this is why um, unit testing can be valuable in a large or even a small software project that is a collaborative project or even one that you're just doing it to test yourself as you go. Okay, so that's the basic idea of testing. Now, let's think about what are all the pieces you need. So number one is, so I'm going to, so there's so many possibilities. You could do testing in Python and whatever language you're doing. You could do it. You, there's so many, I'm, I'm going to zero down and live in the JavaScript world. You could be doing a server-side web app, just like a client-side JavaScript thing. Some open source library that's meant to be used. There's so many complicated scenarios, but let's pick a simple one. I just have a single JavaScript file called sketch.js. And this is my P5 creative assignment, blah, 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 blah. And what I want to do is I want to run a test on the code that's in that file. I need some mechanism to do that. The thing, the tools that I'm going to use to do that, so this is just for the testing, is I'm going to use Node, and I'm not using Node.js node because I'm creating a web server, although I might be doing that at some point in another project. I'm using Node just essentially as like a command line utility to run the test. Because there are Node packages collections of code and libraries to allow you to do testing through Node. And the one that I want to use is something called Jest. And I, I'll be perfectly honest, the reason why I'm using Jest is because I asked a whole bunch of people who seem to know about this stuff, what should I use? And they said Jest. Now, I believe P5 uses Mocha. You, you know, type in the comments, your favorite testing framework, <laughs> go nuts. Um, but Jest is, a pro is an open source project from Facebook, open source that I believe is, is generally paired with React. Now again, I'm not doing React. I don't even, I know less about React than I know about continuous integration. But I'm going to use Jest because it's pretty simple and I liked it, I looked at it, it's, it's fine. But, so that's what I need. So what I'm gonna need to do is somehow configure my Node project so that I can write NPM test. I want to run this command. It's going to do a whole bunch of stuff, and it's either going to say something like success or failure. And hopefully, if it's failure, it's going to give me a report. So this is the idea of testing. Now, while I'm here in the kind of overall 
landscape of this. Let's, um, let me make a little map here. <laughs> I gotta erase this. Let's think about where everything lives. Because how, do GitHub, how does GitHub play a role in this and how does CircleCI or uh, continuous integration play a role in this? So number one, I have my, on my laptop, which is my local client computer where I'm doing the development, I have sketch.js. I also have my whole node project, which is really just, by the way, a package.json file and some other stuff. What I could do is I could push this repository. I'll use the idea of a cloud, even though it's really just an underground bunker, of course, as we know. <laughs> I could use this, I could push this repository to GitHub. So I could have it saved on GitHub. And the nice thing about that is lots of other people could start to pull it and then make changes or propose changes through pull requests. So where do I run the tests? On the one hand, so these are lots of other little client computers. On the other hand, one hand, I could change my code and run my tests locally. And then I know like, ah, my tests run, great, I'm gonna push to GitHub. Other people could clone the repository, make changes, run the tests themselves, and feel confident and push to the repository. But wouldn't it be nice if GitHub could run the tests for me? Anytime that I try to push code there, it's gonna say like, ah, 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 let me test that first. I'll tell you if it's okay. It can't, GitHub does not have that as a server. You can't execute code on GitHub. You can host your projects there. You can even uh, web host uh, you know, client side JavaScript programs there. Um, but you need something else. You need a, a continuous integration service. And that is where uh, something like Circle CI comes in. So I don't know what I'm drawing here, but Circle CI is another thing that lives in the cloud shaped underground bunker. And what Circle CI does is it can be an in, it can be a service. It can be linked as a service to your particular GitHub account. So you sign up for a Circle CI account in the same way that you sign up for a GitHub account. Circle CI has a good free tier, which you can do just about everything that I'm showing you in this video. Um, for small projects and small teams, you can absolutely use it. Um, and so what you can do is you can say, hey, anytime I push or anytime I commit or do a pull request, please go and run, open a little instance of a server on CircleCI to run a bunch of node stuff to check the tests and report back. So this is the process. And so what I'm going to show you as I, uh, in the next video, I'm gonna actually just make an entirely simple basic example of one little JavaScript program with one test and continuous integration. I'm gonna make it so that if you, the viewer watching right now, you cannot, you could, you cannot submit a pull, you can submit a pull request, but I, as the administrator of the repository, will not be allowed to merge it unless the tests that I have written for that project pass. So that's the basic gist of it. I'm sure there are gonna be some questions and things and I will return in a moment in the next video to start writing what I need in package.json, what I need in sketch.js, what did I need in a test file, and all the other things that I'm forgetting to mention right now.